Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Indigo Pins Q1 FI24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Manoj Menon from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Hey, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, as usual, it's a wonderful uh, good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, or even good night, uh, depending on the part of the world you're joining this call from. Uh, representing ISEC, uh, it's our absolute pleasure to host the management of uh, Indigo Paints once again for the results conference call. Uh, now over to uh, Sriheri from the management for uh, introducing the uh, team members and the further proceedings. Thank you. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining the call today. Uh, yesterday, we have uploaded both the standalone financials as well as consolidated financials for the quarter ending June 30th. And to discuss the same, we have uh, from the management team today, Mr. Heyman Jalan, Chairman and Managing Director, Mr. Suresh Babu, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Chetan Humani, Chief Financial Officer, and myself from Sri Hari. As usual, we'll have a quick uh, brief on the performance of the company, followed by Q&A. Over to Mr. Jalan. Thanks, Sri Hari. Uh, thank you all for joining in on the earnings call of Indigo Paints for Q1 FY24. As Sri Hari mentioned, uh, our financials for the quarter ending 30th June 2023 have been uploaded on the stock exchange portals along with our analyst presentation and we hope that you have had a chance to go through them. After the acquisition of a 51% stake in Apple Chemi India Private Limited, uh, we have published both the standalone and the consolidated financials for the quarter. It is quite satisfying to see our strategy 2.0, as you analysts tend to call it, uh, which was announced about a year ago at the same analyst call forum, that this strategy is playing out successfully. And it is heartening to see Indigo Paints getting back to the trend of growing at 2x to 3x the industry growth rate. This phenomenon was part of our success story for 10 years prior to our IPO. Unfortunately, our growth rate tapered down to a level closer to the overall industry growth rate during FY22. Naturally, we as a company were very concerned and we announced a modified strategy 2.0 for the forthcoming years. It sometimes takes some time for a modified strategy to fructify into results. And I'm happy to see that the modified approach is finally bearing very tangible results. I shall first elaborate on the standalone results of the company for the quarter. Compared to Q1 of last year, our sales in Q1 of this year have registered a value growth of 23.67%, which is far ahead of the industry growth. Our gross margins at 47.58% is significantly higher than the gross margin of 45.19% on a Y-on-Y basis. I may add that our gross margin percentage has consistently been the highest in the entire paint industry by a very wide margin. Our EBITDA has increased significantly by 35.3% from a figure of 35.28 crores in Q1 of last fiscal to rupees 47.73 crores in Q1 of this year. Our EBITDA margin of 7.23% clocked in this quarter has also expanded significantly from 15.75% registered in the comparable period of last year. Correspondingly, the PAT numbers have grown by 57.15% on a Y on Y basis from Rs. 19.9 crores last year 
to 31.29 crores in the corresponding quarter this year. And our PAT margins have also expanded to a healthy 11.15% compared to 8.87% in Q1 of last year. I'll now come to the consolidated results and on a consolidated basis, our revenues grew by 28.76% to a figure of rupees 288.42 crores, while the EBITDA grew by 39.21% and the PAT grew at by 58.29%. The EBITDA margin on a consolidated basis was 17.03%, and the PAT margin on a consolidated basis was at 10.78%. Both the management teams at Indigo Paints and Apple Chemi are working together to bring out the synergies in sales, in purchase, in finance, and in distribution activities. Apple Chemi has started expanding its operations outside the state of Maharashtra, and has ramped up the sales and marketing team in various parts of India. We expect that Apple Chemi will shortly start supplies of its products in various parts of India outside Maharashtra and will soon become a truly pan-Indian company in the days to come. Coming back to Indigo Paints in line with our brand building strategy, our company continued to spend aggressively on advertising and promotion. During the last quarter, we have launched a new advertisement campaign to promote our economy range of products. Although the absolute spends on advertising and promotion remained largely unchanged from Q1 of last year, our ANP spends as a percentage of net revenue has dropped from 9.4% in Q1 of last year to 7.6% in Q1 of this year. As guided before, we expect this declining trend to continue in the future as we expect that the advertising spends will grow at a much slower pace than the increase in top line sales. We have also given our volume and value growth numbers for each of the four major categories of paint products in the analyst presentation, being consistent with our past pattern of transparent disclosures. We can observe that the value growth and volume growths are largely in sync. During the last quarter, the company witnessed very high volume and value growth in all categories of paint products. The growth was particularly high in the putty category, as well as in the category of primers and distempers. Growth in the categories of enamels and also in the emulsion category were also quite impressive. We continue to focus on network expansion and improving the throughput per active dealer as also increasing our tinting machine population. Our count of active dealers and tinting machine population stood at almost 16,700 for active dealers and 8,657 for our tinting machines on 30th June 2023. We have also added two new depots in North India during the last quarter to, to increase our distribution efficiency. We intend to open a few more depots in the forthcoming quarters to further strengthen our distribution network. On new product front, a comprehensive range of waterproofing products at the retail level have been launched across the country and this range is picking up very good sales traction. On CapEx, trial production has been carried out successfully at our new water-based plant in Tamil Nadu, and we are very shortly expecting our final few statutory approvals for commencement of commercial production. 
We hope this will happen in the next couple of weeks. Work has also started at the proposed new water-based plant to be commissioned in Jodhpur of 90,000 KL per annum capacity, which we expect will be up and running by the end of FY25. To keep pace with the demand for solvent-based products, a solvent-based paint plant will also be set up at Jodhpur. This plant will be having a capacity to produce 12,000 KL per annum and is expected to be operational sometime in the next fiscal. We have worked very hard during the past year to restore our top line growth to a level of 2x the industry growth rate. Towards this end, we have initiated a large number of measures during the last fiscal, including our focus on Tier 1 and Tier 2 TAUs, as opposed to our earlier focus on smaller Tier 3 and Tier 4 towns. Many other strategic initiatives were also undertaken in a phased manner last year, some of which cannot be elaborated upon in public for confidentiality reasons. These initiatives do take some time to show results. Although green shoots were clearly visible in the second half of the last fiscal, the full manifestation has emerged in the last quarter. I might say that we have gone significantly beyond our stated goal of achieving 2x the industry growth, for we have ended up at more than 3x the industry growth on a standalone basis and about 4x the industry growth on a consolidated basis. Now we fully understand that the true test of success will be proven only if we manage to maintain the superior growth for the several successive quarters. We at Indigo shall leave no stone, stone unturned to demonstrate precisely that. Q2 has started off on a very positive note for us and our high growth momentum of Q1 has certainly carried forward in the month of July. I sincerely hope that Indigo Paints will be successful in exhibiting continued outperformance of industry growth rate in the coming successive quarters to instill confidence in our shareholders of our ability. As always, Indigo's focus is not just on growth, but on profitable growth. In terms of bottom line growth, and various profitability parameters, I might add that our track record has been quite impeccable. We shall strive our best to ensure that this track record remains intact in the future. That is all that I have to say in terms of introductory comments. Uh, I welcome any questions that people may have who are listening in. Over to you, Manoj. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Abneesh Roy from New Amma Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks and uh, congrats on very good set of numbers. My first question is uh, 3x the growth of the industry. Uh, earlier you had pointed out that 40% uh, increase in the uh, on-ground sales team you are doing and also new loyalty program for paint contractors. So has this already uh, given the full benefit uh, and which one is working better and any learnings, any tweaking you would need in either of these? So Abneesh, uh, well, thanks for the congratulations on the numbers. Now, you know, when you initiate three or four different initiatives, it's very hard to separate the results of them and say which initiative has contributed what. Some of these 
have a multiplicative effect rather than a simply additive effect. So it's very difficult for me to quantify as to which of these initiatives have yielded more. I think they have to be taken all in tandem. And as far as tweaking ahead is concerned, uh, certainly that's an ongoing process. And uh, you keep tweaking these things. So, you know, when we have added to the sales force, it's certainly not the end of it. Uh, we have planned on a more phased-wise increase in sales force in every quarter for the next few quarters. Also in our BTL team, which engages with the contractors. Further engagements with the contractors and the painters, both in physical form and in the digital format, uh, and, and all of the things that we have been talking about. So I think this is an ongoing process. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, what we have demonstrated in the first quarter will not only be sustained, but we hope it will be accelerated upon in the quarters to come. And uh, that is what we as a company will strive for. One follow-up here. Uh, the same team is now selling waterproofing also, or there is a separate team? No, it is the same team at the moment because by and large there is a very large overlap between paint dealers and selling of these uh, retail waterproofing and construction chemicals. So by now I think these waterproofing products at the retail level are almost an integral part of paint offerings for most companies. So at the moment, yes, it is the same team that is selling both. Sure. Uh, my second question is on uh, slide number 15. Uh, here I see almost 8% difference between the value and volume growth of primer, distemper, and others. So is this a price cut? Is this a mix uh, which, is a, uh, which is different? And uh, why is it uh, in terms of uh, pricing different versus emulsions and enamels, uh, uh, if you could explain that? Thank you for asking this question. I was hoping somebody would notice it. And you see that in all other categories, you know, the volume growth and value growths are pretty much in sync. But when you come to the primer and distemper category, the volume growth, as you rightly pointed out, is 9 percentage points ahead of the value growth. Now, this is exactly what we are saying. That this is the fallacy that stems in when you start combining products together. Now, in this particular case, where we are combining primers and distempers, both of which are relatively low value added, but distemper being the lower value compared to primers. Our growth in distemper volumes has been disproportionately high compared to our volume growth in primers. Therefore, the overall volume growth when you put the two together becomes higher than the value growth. Now, you can see for yourself, even though we have split up the paint category into four different categories, the fact that we have combined primers and distempers and others in one category shows the contradictions that come between volume growth and value growth because of disparate things being put together. Now imagine if we start following what our other competitors do of combining all the products into one, then you can understand what we consistently say that volume growth numbers really mean nothing unless you give more granular details of what volume growth and value growth are in different segments. So I, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, that was uh, quite helpful. My last question is on the advertising spends and growth in the Tier 1 and Tier 2 market. Uh, in FI23, your Tier 1, Tier 2 market was around 32%. Uh, uh, has it now become 35%? Uh, and second is when you're expanding so much in these tough markets where uh, your legacy presence has been lower versus the Tier 3, Tier 4, how come you are able to save on advertising spend? Because the saving on advertising spend seems uh, slightly ahead of expectation. Uh, I, I understand uh, the other players are more at 4 to 5 percent of the revenue. You are still maybe 7.5 to 8 percent. But it used to be in double digits, so it, it seems uh, the savings are ahead of expectation. See, uh, the growth even in this quarter in Tier 1 and Tier 2 towns has been about 1.5x the growth in the smaller towns. So. As far as the whole year of last year is concerned, you're right, uh, the Tier 1 and Tier 2 towns together had started contributing 32%, which was a jump from 25% what they contributed in the year before that. Uh, 
I have not analyzed the contribution that has come in from tier one, tier two towns as far as a quarter is concerned. It's more meaningful to analyze it when the full year is over. We hope that by the end of the year, it will start contributing at least about 38% or so of our total revenue, maybe 40% if we are lucky. Now, uh, you talk about advertising spend. So, see, advertising spends has nothing to do with tier one towns or tier three towns. Your TV ads, you know, percolate through all genres of towns uh, equally. Now, uh, the advertising spends have not tapered down. The advertising spends are pretty stable. And in the course of the year, you'll find that there will be a slight increase in the advertising spends. But the growth in the advertising spends will be lower than the top line growth. And therefore, as a percentage of top line, they will decline. And that's what we have been saying for the last two and a half years. And that is why the EBITDA margin will keep improving. And I think that the level of advertising we are doing now is quite sufficient. We have done brand track studies in many states. And we find that the recall of our brand name is uh, perhaps a little disproportionately high compared to our brand share, our uh, market share. And uh, therefore, disproportionately just going on increasing on advertising, we don't think is going to give us that much of incremental value. It is more important now to spend on other things, our engagements with the influencers uh, in various formats, you know, both in terms of manpower costs as well as the incentivization that we do for the influencers and the efforts that we put on the ground to engage with them. It is those that are going to drive the growth and, uh, you know, the proof of the pudding lies in the eating. And uh, the quarterly results clearly demonstrate that the path that we have chalked out on uh, is bearing the desired results. So thanks. Uh, that's all from me. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. <coughs> the next question is from the line of Namit Arora from Ingrowth Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And Hemanji, thank you for your very detailed thoughts in the opening remarks as well as the Q&A. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one is that uh, uh, I know you've acquired Apple Kemi. Uh, are you still looking at any gaps in either capabilities or products or geographical presence uh, to uh, to sort of uh, augment those? Would you continue to look at acquisitions? That is my question number one. Uh, and question number two was, are there, uh, I know you talked of a very positive first quarter and continued momentum in second quarter, uh, but are there any things either macro or micro uh, that you worry about? Thank you. So, Apple Chemi itself, I think, has the capabilities of becoming a pan-Indian player. So, I don't think that there are, you know, we're looking actively to acquire a similar company in another geography. I think it is best that we organically grow Apple Chemi to cover various geographies in India. As far as product segments are concerned, yes, there are other product segments which are allied to that line in construction chemicals, which Apple Chemi may not be uh, engaged in today. Uh, I won't say that we are going out of the way to engage with any such company, but we are always welcome to look at such opportunities as and when they come. <clears throat> and if such an opportunity does come up, which adds synergy, to the business of Apple Chemi, we'd be more than happy to look at it as and when it comes if we think it is a good fit. Your second question about macro and micro environment uh, that may worry us or be of concern, at this point in time, not really so. Uh, the paint industry has been fairly resilient with changes in macro environment. Uh, over the last 10, 15 years, if you see, uh, you know, both inflation graph in India, the overall economic growth, GDP growth, they have gone through good spells and bad spells. But the paint industry has been fairly resilient towards all of that. And also when it comes to a smaller player, a relatively smaller player like us, you know, most of our growth comes from gaining market share from others because our base is very small. So minor changes in macro environment, I don't think will affect us in any significant way. In terms of micro parameters, yes, I mean, uh, the raw material prices have been fairly benign during the last 
four quarters, I would say. They have shown a continuous declining trend. I think they are pretty steady now for the last couple of months. If something were to happen to upset that and if raw material prices suddenly start moving northwards, and there's no indication at the moment that that would happen, but if that were to happen, then it would affect the entire paint industry and the paint industry will again have to tighten its belts a little bit on trade discounts, etc. But I don't foresee any major change in the macro-micro environment that would cause us sleepless nights at this point in time. Uh, thank you very much for your comprehensive answer to both the questions, and all the best to the entire team. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Namit. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Hiral Desai from Anivet PMS. Please go ahead. Hi, Amanji. Uh, congratulations on a superb quarter. Thank you, Hiralji. Yeah, so, uh, Amanji, when we had met in, you know, Feb uh, this year, I think you were very confident uh, that some of the strategic initiatives uh, that you've taken uh, will play out in FY24. Uh, so, you know, congratulations to the entire team for that. Uh, I had just one question on uh, Apple Chemi's uh, B2B business. So I think it was about uh, 45 crores last year. So just wondering, I mean, is there... Is uh, there sir, like this a is a chorus call operator. I'm so sorry to interrupt. May I please request you to speak a bit louder or use the handset mode as your audio is not clearly audible. Uh, is it better now? Yes. Yeah, you're much better, Ranji. But go ahead, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... Uh, so, so just on the Apple Chemi uh, B2B business, if you could, you know, sort of spell out, uh, you know, how large can it become over next uh, three years or so, uh, just wanted your thoughts on that. See, Apple Chemi last year, if I remember correctly, was somewhere around 43 crores or 42 crores or thereabouts. Yes. Uh, they have largely been operating in Maharashtra with, uh, you know, very pedigreed uh, customer base of some of the largest infrastructural companies in the country like LNT and Shapurji, Palunji, BJ Shirke and Apcons and so on and so forth, uh, largely been Maharashtra focused. Uh, their order book at the moment seems to suggest that from within the same geography and the same customer base, they could do maybe 40% or more growth uh, in the existing geography with their existing customer base. Now, this same customer base exists in every corner of India and you know how much the infrastructure space is being invested in by the government of India. True. And so we have encouraged Apple Chemi and they have followed our guidance and they have recruited large number of sales and marketing teams in about eight, nine other states during the last quarter. Now, B2B business takes a few months time to fructify into results. We expect that a reasonable order flow from some of the other geographies will commence in Q2 and will probably gather a lot more momentum in the second half of this year. So it's a, it's a very small company where the sky is the limit in terms of opportunities. They certainly have the capabilities, the technology, and the patents to execute it. Now, how fast the numbers will grow over what period of time is something that is very difficult to speculate. But, uh, you know, I mean, in a couple of years, to reach a number of 200 crores in top line is not unforeseeable. Uh, I mean, it is something very, very practical and possible. Uh, how soon that will happen is something a little difficult to predict because, you know, we have invested in that company just three months ago. And let's see their strategy playing out for a couple of quarters before we start giving any specific number guidances, but uh, whatever it is, the growth can only be northwards at a high trajectory. And uh, we sincerely hope that that happens. Hello? Yeah, Imanji, yes, please. actually the number that I was thinking about, so more like 200 crores in three years. So I think all Chalina, the... Chalina, great men think alike. <laughs> so all the best, nothing, nothing else on the business. Thank you, Hiralji. Thank you. Before we take the next question, I'd like to remind participants, if you wish to ask a question, please press star then 1 on their touchstone telephone.
The next question is from the line of Anupama Prakash from Arihan Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, congratulations for the great set of numbers. So my question is just a follow-up question. It was related to Apple Candy only. So Apple Candy will open doors for institutional segment, and uh, you have answered what kind of opportunities. But just a follow-up question, as in how the margins are going to be impacted once we go substantially into this segment? See, the, uh, Anupama ji, the EBITDA margins and, uh, you know, uh, all the other profitability parameter margins of Apple Chemi are pretty similar to our set of numbers. So, therefore, a growth in Apple Chemi is not likely to be either margin dilutive or margin accretive. So, I think that, uh, you know, our, our EBITDA numbers on a consolidated basis or the uh, gross margin numbers or even the PAT numbers as a percentage are going to change in any appreciable manner because they do operate in, uh, you know, in, in product ranges where they have a technological edge because of which they command some kind of a pricing premium. In many of their products, they are competing against very high value imports and really don't have too many competitors within India, so to speak, and therefore we are not worried about any margin dilution that will happen with the expansion of Apple Chemi. Okay, so I got it, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudha Joshi from ICACS Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for opportunities. I am so sorry to interrupt, but may I please request you to use the handset mode while speaking? There's a lot of disturbance from your audio. Yeah. One uh, handset itself. Uh, uh, but still, I will go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Anirudh. There is some disturbance, but we'll try and decipher what you're saying. Yeah, sir. Uh, regarding the strategy on business, we see uh, the most of the PR uh, different teams. And uh, they have been that the. Uh, I'm sorry, Anirudh, I, I really can't understand what you're saying. There's just too much of static on the line. Yeah, uh, is it okay now, sir? Yeah, much better. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so the question is uh, most of our peers have indicated about their strategy in projects business, indicating this business is becoming much larger and they are having separate teams for tracking architects as well as uh, other uh, large contractors, influencers, etc. So I, I understand that the ROC in this business is relatively lower, but still uh, what will be our strategy on this side of the business over a period of, let's say, next uh, three odd years? That is question number one. And secondly, we are growing at a uh, phenomenal rate. So you want to point out some of the regions or states which are doing uh, relatively better for us uh, as far as the growth is concerned and uh, uh, which are the other regions where we can see more uh, similar kind of a growth performance. Also, last question, third question, on July, uh, I guess uh, we have indicated that July has been a uh, blockbuster month. So, um, I mean, uh, uh, any, any particular uh, reason uh, why we are seeing such strong growth, whereas the Peers are not seeing, uh, peers are not yet able to such a uh, report strong growth. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, let uh, Suresh Babu, our CEO, answer some of these questions that you have asked. Yeah, morning, Anirudh. Regarding that first question of projects uh, uh, team and the focus on projects, uh, Anirudh, we have just about started uh, giving a little bit of focus on the project uh, business. Uh, we have uh, recruited a senior person who would be uh, heading that uh, vertical from Pune. And uh, I think going forward, we have identified certain geographies where we will be setting up teams for catering only to the project business. But that's, that's just the starting, I would say. Uh, there is a long way to go in that. And uh, the second one was regions of higher growth. Anirudh, it's quite difficult to uh, tell you or reveal to you which are the exact regions, uh, but it is more or less on the lines of what we were doing earlier. Most of our regions other than Kerala are also growing quite high, and uh, and Kerala also has been registering uh, double-digit growth. Uh, that's about it. 
and uh, the third one was uh, He's talking about july so you're saying that july we have witnessed very high growth so you said compared to competitors now frankly i have no idea what competitors have registered in the month of july I, all i can say is that if the trajectory of their stated results in q1 have continued in july and that's a very big if i don't know whether they have gone up or gone down our momentum in q1 has definitely more than sustained itself in july that's all i can say uh, unfortunately we'll have to wait for 3 months to see how the other competitors are doing in q2 and only then will we find out as to whether we continue to outperform them by the same factor or not as far as q2 is concerned but uh, yeah july has been good and uh, pretty much the same pattern uh, as april may june so you know four months in a row when we are doing good growth that kind of augurs well uh, gives us confidence that this is sustainable and not a one off result yes uh, so this is very helpful yeah thank you thank you reminder to the participants if you wish to ask a question please press star then one on your touchstone telephone the next question is from the line of tejesh shah from spark capital please go ahead uh hi sir uh thanks for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a very good set of numbers uh a couple of questions from my side the so first one uh when i see a network expansion and if i just compare june to june uh this year versus the previous june basically 21 versus 22 so we had moved from some 14000 odd dealers to 16700 dealers on on uh, 16500 dealers in the last year and then this year the addition has been slightly underwhelming so just wanted to understand that is it like uh, two or three quarters back you had highlighted that after a point the focus should be to increase throughput per store uh, so are we kind of drifting towards that part of the strategy or uh, we are reading too much into the slowdown on on dealer addition as of now yeah a little of both uh, you know increasing dealer count is always the focus uh even when we talk about tier 1 and tier 2 towns it's not that we are short of dealers we have a large number of dealers there our tinting machine population was low in these towns and the throughput per dealer was very low as far as the tier 1 and tier 2 cities were concerned so you're right just adding dealers for increasing a head count is not what is going to give you disproportionate results concentrating more on throughput per dealer is likely to give you much more disproportionate results so yes between the two uh, increasing throughput per dealer is on a higher focus for us than simply increasing dealer count although uh, we still focus a lot on increasing the dealer base now if you look at the tinting machine count which is one of the primary determinants of throughput per dealer you will find that that has been very healthy uh, from last june to this year june we have added about 1220 tinting machines so that's averaging 100 a month and uh, if you look at this quarter itself uh, we have added almost 400 tinting machines so that's you know like 125 130 a month uh, which is a pretty good number so adding more tinting machines with the dealers that we have is what is going to give the higher throughput per dealer and that will give us more bang for the effort in the intermediate term and of course the dealer count will slowly keep pinching up uh, as it is happening uh, maybe at a slightly slower pace now got it. and so uh, like in fmc in early days there used to be a thumb rule uh, that if you expand your distribution by 10% one can expect a revenue growth of 3% uh are you seeing any such uh, thumb rule which can play out in our sector uh <laughs> no we have not <coughs> done it uh, any any analysis on that but i would say that you know in any particular geography uh, a disproportionate increase in the number of dealers becomes somewhat counterproductive because then you increase the competitive uh, you know intensity between the dealers their profit margin starts going down because they each start undercutting the other to sell their products 
and after some time their interest in selling your brand starts waning a little bit so it's a fine edge you know a very tight rope that you had to walk as to how many dealers to increase so that you know your distribution efficiency improves your throughput your sales go up at the same time you have to keep the interest of the dealer alive in profitability of your product so that they don't start losing interest in your product now i may add that in the last one year we have also stated in the past that we have started focusing on appointing a lot of wholesalers so some of these dealer additions that are happening a large percentage of them are wholesalers now a wholesaler in turn starts catering to another 50 small outlets so we only talk about active dealers who are engaged directly with us we don't report sort of touch points that we have increased upon as some of the other paint companies like to report because we think that's not very quantifiable and uh, very difficult to get exact data on and uh, you know we'd be very hesitant to give out a number that uh, we cannot audit and verify in a very specific manner so many of the dealer additions that are happening are happening with wholesalers so actually our touch points are increasing far more than what the numbers may show and uh, the tinting machine count is more representative of uh, Uh, the intensity of sale that the dealer is uh, engaging in perfect sir and sir uh, 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 the kind of expansion that we have seen in from industry in the recent past in terms of adding dealers uh, do you see and and this is for industry and for us as well do you see the credit worthiness of or the credit quality curve we are going down that or or is it still maintaining the same oh absolutely credit is not something that we sacrifice on at all we are very very strict on our payment terms and uh, our our outstandings uh, in terms of number of days have been pretty consistent and marginally going down by one or two days or something uh, so i i don't think that uh, we use credit as a tool to grow that's a very dangerous strategy to tread on and uh, certainly indigo paints would never be party to using credit as a leverage for growth uh, that's that's not at all uh, in our dna very assuring sir as a last question uh, uh, so, uh, hypothetically uh, obviously crude has been very volatile of late but hypothetically let's say uh, for the rest of the year if uh, raw material basket has to go benign from here uh, as a strategy would you uh like to pass on the benefit to consumer and how do you see the competitor intensity behaving in 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 the hypothetical scenario okay so two questions to that a whether we'd like to pass on by a price cut uh, unfortunately that decision is always taken by the market leader uh, we don't take those decisions uh it really makes not much of a difference because what happens is that when raw material prices started uh, going benign for the last few quarters uh although the prices were not reduced of paints but the discounts of the trade schemes that were offered by everyone started getting ramped up by all players in the industry so the revenues that we report as per indias method of accounting is net of all discounts so uh suppose the market leader were to announce some kind of a price cut in the months ahead hypothetically as you said what is likely to happen is that it will be accompanied with a reduction in the quantum of trade discounts that will also be concurrently uh, happening so on a net basis i don't think the top line is going to change very significantly now the other question that you asked about you know increasing incoming competition from other players uh i think any new competitor would play a price war in paints at its own peril and it would be silly on their part if they attempted to do that because paint is not a product which is as elastic in terms of pricing the demand for paints and uh, you know people do like to buy good quality paint uh, because it's a statement that they make for their house 
and generally we have seen that undercutting prices and offering products at a lower price gives the impression rightly or wrongly to the customer that this is an inferior quality paint and those kinds of efforts have not been successful in the past now taking your argument one step further hypothetically as you kept saying suppose a new competitor were to engage in some kind of a price war in certain paint segments what would happen i think logic would dictate that whoever has the strongest gross margin is likely to be hurt the least and a paint player with low gross margins and low ebitda margins is likely to be impacted more uh we for many many quarters or many years have always been the industry leader in gross margins so i think we are likely to be the least impacted should such a situation arise which to begin with i think is quite unlikely very very clear sir thanks and all the best to the team thanks thank you the next question is from the line of shri ram an individual investor please go ahead yeah so two questions uh, one is you know can you give the geographic split uh, south north east and west and second is your product mix break up how much would be emulsions and the other categories rough uh, break up would be useful no i think you're asking for questions which i do have the answers to but i would hesitate in sharing such granular information at this forum as to how much does each segment contribute uh in general broadly i can say uh north india was the place where we entered the last and many states in north india like jammu and kashmir himachal pradesh delhi even punjab we are and uh, uttarakhand we are fairly recent entrants in the last 2 to 3 years some cases 4 years that we have entered those states so overall north india's contribution is somewhat less than other parts the only place where we have been disclosing our uh, you know contribution to the overline uh, total top line has been the state of kerala which last year if i recall was about 28% so that makes south india a little kind of heavy uh, although we are pretty strong now in both east and west india and uh, gaining uh, market share in all those regions but uh, specifically to give you contribution of each region or each product line to our overall uh, turnover i think would be parting with information which would be somewhat confidential and uh, i i would not be very comfortable in sharing that information we are sharing our growth numbers in all paint categories separately which is far more than what anyone else in the paint industry discloses and uh, i'm afraid that's as, as far as we are willing to go and sir you know for, you know five years from now do you still expect you know kerala to contribute one third of the revenue what 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 is your sense on that no i think uh, with the high market share that we have in kerala we cannot expect the growth in kerala to be uh, as much as our ambitious growth plans for other parts of india so the share of kerala in our overall pie has been gradually going down each year and if you see our uh, transcripts of our earlier presentations etc a couple of years ago that number was about 32% uh, it kind of goes down by about 1 and 1/2 2% every year and that is good because it makes us less dependent on the vagaries of one state having said that kerala itself has been growing phenomenally well during the last 8 9 months almost at par with our overall company growth rate so uh yeah i mean uh, we, we expect kerala to continue to contribute a fairly significant portion of our revenue but i'd be surprised if it continues to be i mean some time ago it was 33% today it's 28% i mean logic would suggest that it it may come down to 25% in a year or two but it will still be heavy thank you thank you so much all the best thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i would now like to hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments thank you and over to you all 
Well, thank you all for uh, listening in patiently, for all your accolades for our good results, and for the very interesting questions that you have had. Uh, we look forward to engaging with you in every successive quarter. And we at Indigo Paints uh, hope to continue our uh, good performance in the quarters to come. So, love to engage with you on a one-to-one -one basis, as many of you have been doing, and of course, collectively in this conference call every quarter. Thank you all for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we conclude today's conference. Thank you all for joining Given Our Disconnected Lines.